welcome back for this week's episode of Paint and Ponder. I guess I've done enough now that I can say episodes. I don't know. But today's is... I'm doing another animal picture, partly because if you've looked at my shop, you saw the owl, and I loved how that turned out, and I thought, what the heck, why not do something else? So the picture that I am working on is based off of a photograph that I found online. Now, I tried to find who had taken the photograph, and I couldn't find that information to let you know who that artist is. But they had taken this beautiful photograph of a mouse sitting on top of a mushroom. And now remember with the painting, you change the painting to be what your perception is. I, I have a different need than a photographer does. But here's the rough sketch that we're doing. And uh, obviously I've sped all of this up so that we're not doing it in real time. But this is just getting the rough outline of, of how I might want to place things, how I might want to change things for the future and as I'm working on this I'm thinking about you know how much paper do I have obviously it's not as big as my sketchbook is but how much paper do I have where I, I want to shift different things in the photo where I want the emphasis of the photo to be uh, and kind of make it more complete of course I'm going to move on to a shade study so this is the beginning of that process of putting things out and laying things down. Now, I literally picked this picture and decided to do this painting for the sole reason that I wanted to. There's no other reason. Nobody asked me to do this. Uh, I not, you know, I'm not saying mice are my favorite animals in the world or anything like that. It's just purely on a whim. And I, when I started this painting, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And to me, that's a key aspect for relaxation when it comes to painting, is I'm doing something because I want to, not because I have to or because I feel pressured to. Now, having said that, I have fulfilled a couple of commissions, and I want to say for those folks, I don't feel pressured by you. Uh, if I don't feel it's something I can do, I won't. I won't accept the commission, but that's a whole separate conversation. These types of paintings are ones that just strike my fancy. And so it's it's either I want to challenge myself. And in this case, the challenge for me is the fact that I don't have a lot of experience painting animals. Uh, the few that I have that have been success successful, I've really enjoyed. But that doesn't mean I'm very good at it, at least in my estimation. I'm still finding my own artistic language when it comes to those things. And I haven't even started talking about painting people. That's a whole different ball game that I can't say that I'm particularly gifted at. So this is challenging for me in that respect. It's challenging uh, because I just want to enjoy the process itself. And I have to say, I really enjoyed actually making the videos for this painting this time around, in part because I worried less about when I was starting and stopping the videos itself, so that I did a lot more editing when it came to putting the video forward than not. I was really happy, if you've seen my other videos, how the gray came out in this. I mixed my own gray, and it looks gray. It doesn't look bluish or brownish. It, I actually kind of hit that, that tint just right. And I go in this part from doing the, the second level of shadowing and color to the third level pretty much right away. And the mushroom that the mouse was sitting on was in some ways particularly... Uh, worrisome for me in part because the mushroom itself has kind of a shiny reflective surface which meant I had to have varying shadows on the mushroom itself so you're going to have to wait and see at the end if, if I succeeded in that aspect. I was also worried about with the mouse the fact that it's fur. You, you can't do just a flat wash and it looks like fur. I've never been successful at that, so you have to put detail in. And what I've learned over the years with detail is you've got to commit to it. So now we've moved on to the actual painting itself. And a couple things to note in this, and this whole thing is going to be split onto two videos, but 
I am using Strathmore 400 series paper for this. This is a pretty easy paper to get your hands on. It's not too expensive and it's the one I have the most experience with, which is one of the reasons why I chose this paper. You'll notice on the mushroom itself, there's these yellow dots already there. So I didn't go through and show you the whole sketch up process of this and all of that again, because I figured you didn't probably didn't want to see it this time around. But those yellow dots is I used uh, a masking fluid, which is essentially the way, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but the way I see it is, is it's little daubs of the glue that's on the back of tape. And you let it dry and you put it on certain parts you want white. Now the mushroom, I believe, is probably a death cap mushroom. I think those are the red ones with the white spots. And so it has these white bumpy spots all over it. And so that's what that, that yellow stuff is on there. This painting itself was very relaxing for me. I did do it over the period of several days uh, because this is not a heavy wet on wet painting type. Uh, the, the wet painting type usually is one I found with a lot of planning can get through in one day. This type I'm building colors up. So often for myself is I will paint a section and then I'll come back the next day even if I can come back to it in a couple hours and that's just more of a personal preference. Sometimes I do come back to it in a couple hours and continue through the day. Uh, partly because when I have something there, it's that one spot is a dedicated spot for painting. So far, I am happy with the colors that I mixed up on this. Uh, this is my normal table palette. So these are what I consider my best watercolors and some of the ones I have the most experience with. They're the M. Graham watercolor primarily with, I think, two or three Daniel Smith watercolors there and at some point I'll do uh, a review of my own palette maybe when I get some better recording equipment or I shouldn't say better but better situated recording equipment that might be down the future but I really enjoy doing this painting and, I, and I'm trying to push myself to learn how to do things like animals and other things it's important to remember, even if you enjoy something, it's okay to push yourself with it. The worst that can happen in all of this is that I waste a piece of paper and a little bit of watercolor. And that's one of the reasons I gravitated towards watercolor, is the ease of being able to just pick it up and do it. I hope you enjoyed this painting today and will join me back for the next video as I seek to finish this painting.